400. A street. 400 Burby Street. 400 we, Burby Street. 400 Burby Street. Burby Street. We did it in a half an hour. The, 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 the wait, dude, wait, wait. You did 400 Burby Street in a half, in a half hour. hour. The dude I was working out with, that nigga said, man, I ain't never working out with your kid. <laughs> <laughs> we got it like 200. That nigga was buckling. He like, man, I ain't never, I ain't working out. I ain't coming down here with you again. <laughs> and you know what, how we got to four, how we did this though? We was locked down. Our unit yeah. was locked down. Our unit was locked down. Mm-hmm. Man, so what? You know, so we got found with a place to work out. We ain't going outside no more. So you know, we get we able to come down to the day room, but you can't go out the building. Yeah. Man, I went down there one day. What we doing? I said, man, we just gonna do some burpees. Thirty minutes worth straight. He said, what? I said, yeah, thirty minutes. You'll be all right. I ain't know he was gonna get the four hundred though. Yo. It just I was on a blackout. Hell, how old was you at the time? I was had to be thirty two. Thirty-two. I was like thirty-two. Man, thirty-two in prison, man. Thirty-two years old. I'm thinking, look, after like fifty. Nah, <laughs> you could, you yo, could. we was a, you could. one time. I know this other guy used to burpees, so he was like, man, he used to talk a lot too. Like, yo, oh, hundred, I could do more hundred burpees faster than you, better time than you. I baited him one night in the <laughs> unit. Baited him. We down there though. It's crowded down there. They shooting pool in there. Everybody working out uh-huh. and we talking. We locked down again. It's another time uh-huh. we locked down. <laughs> He talking down there. Uh, he talk, I bet I could, I'm baiting him. Baiting him. So yeah, I can do more purpose than you. And I'm gonna do, he's like, what is that? I'm gonna do more purpose than under six minutes. He's like, I'm gonna do it in six, six minutes. minutes. He's like, I'm gonna do 100 purpose in six minutes. Ooh. I'm laughing at him. You like, hell like, no. Like, hell, didn't know. I got his ass. <laughs> Man, we did them burpees. I finished them shits in like four minutes and forty seconds. That nigga was mad as hell. <laughs> I blacked out on him. You know, I start talking to myself. Uh-huh. Once I start talking to myself, it's, it's, a, old, it's, it's old. It's old. It's, so you you going to look like a little zone at yeah. that point? Like you just zone I, out. Yo, I get that mental. It's a it, 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 it come mental to me, man. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm trying to overcome something. And mm-hmm. when I start talking to myself, and it's like it's, it's, it's no holds bars, man. Yeah. Man, God, God damn. Hey, look, man, we back with another episode of the FTE Podcast. You got your host, Cool Dex, Smoothie Dex, Driver Dex, International Dex. And this episode, I'm about to be fitness Dex at the end of this episode. Because ah. I, I got, I got a, a, a good fitness inspiration person right here. Somebody that um we linked up, what was it, probably say top of the year? Yeah. Was it like January, like, February? Yeah, February, something? like yeah. top of February. Something yeah. like that. And um we say, yo, y'all, y'all want to do a podcast? I came through, and, and we've been rocking and rolling since then, though. Yes, but, sir. But to my right, I got, I got Dante Thomas right here. So tell yeah. everybody where you from, where we was raised at, man. and then we're going to get into everything Yeah, Yo, else. I'm from Dante Thomas, man. I'm from Trenton, New Jersey, man. I like to say Wilbur section, you know, because there's different little uh, parts they uh-huh. talk about. <laughs> so, you know, I'm from, I'm from I got to put out, I'm from Wilbur section. Uh-huh. Born and raised, born and raised <laughs> Wilbur section, man. You know, I love it, love uh-huh. Trenton, man. You know, just... Through trials and tribulations is just wonderful. Um, so you wasn't in the fitness like prior to, to your nah, incarceration. Heck no. Nah. I work no But I, you, you say you did I sports. play sports. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I wasn't into yeah. fitness. fitness. You know what I'm okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, well uh, what, what sports you was playing? I played football, football, basketball, baseball, right? But then I main thing became my number one thing was basketball. Really? I fell in love with basketball. Really? That I stopped doing every other sport but basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and I was good at football. I was even good at baseball. I had a pitcher at the time. But once I, that ball got in my hand, I really started learning how to dribble that ball. Nah, and it was it just rap. took me somewhere else. Yeah, you, you, had, you had those dreams to go somewhere. You just knew it was like, yeah, I'm just good at. Ball. It was like it was like a dream, but not a dream. Yeah. It just like my. It just you know, I, it wasn't. I want to say like you know, sometimes you got to be guided in that direction. Mm-hmm. So it was just like. It was something fun I love to, to do. do. So yeah. I I'd had a dream, but not a dream because I really didn't take it as serious as I should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what hurt me. Um, so because I, I kind of want to get right it right into yeah, your story. Ahead. I want to get I want to get right it right, right, right into your story. <laughs> I want to warm them up real quick. Jump but into it. you got incarcerated. Yeah. What was what was like your mindset leading up to you getting incarcerated? Like what was you moving? Like what was your man, thoughts like my, on the streets? My thoughts on the streets was get money. That's it. That's all you was money, thinking about. Money, have fun, man. I'm gonna take care of my family, kids. Man, I'm gonna get this money. <laughs> that's it, that's I'm it. chasing yeah. this. Rule number one, yeah. get this money. Rule number one to get this money to make sure I can get my family whatever they want when they call. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, that's all it was about, man. And I could do what I want when I want to do it. You know, man. it got. I you know that it was a part of my. You know, I was immature. You know, so it was like money. Money was like to me was everything. You know, and you know, I, I took a statement one time. The Nas had mentioned, man. Like mm-hmm. I forgot what I think it was a song. Son, was like yo. 
I think it was in a movie or some shit. Like, yo, my kids can't eat no books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kids can't saying? eat no books. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I, that statement, which he didn't mean it that way. But we took it that way. I took it that way. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I tell like, shit, I got to get this money. Then fuck, I'm reading a book for him. <laughs> reading a book. So I said, then, you know, you start learning. Then you realize everything you need is in a book. Really? And, and so when you, I want to say, days leading up to you getting incarcerated, like you didn't handle fillers, like you just, it was just every day, every, like listen, days leading up to incarcerated, it just things started seeming weird, out of line, really? like shit. Even the cops was just so I can fucking different, like you like, but you ain't paying attention. Yeah. You talking smack back to him. <laughs> you like, man, y'all ain't doing nothing. Da da da. Uh, they like, oh your time we're gonna come. Like man, y'all ain't got so shit. So they knew so. They knew, they, they, but they knew so. you got. But it was see what the key was. It was the regular Trenton police mm. that was saying yeah. shit. But so they, like, we, I'm like, I'm thinking about regular Trenton police. I'm like, oh, they ain't got shit. They can't get me mm-hmm. nothing. But the whole time, it was a whole nother set of people. <laughs> the FBI. <laughs> they was on you. <laughs> what? Hey, and, and, then, and then and so so when it happened, what, what man, was it like for you? So so when it first happened, right? They raided my man in them crib, man. And me and, and, and my, uh, I just went to the crib. Probably, this is what happened, right? Mm-hmm. Before they raided my man crib. I'm on a block. It's probably like 4 in the 3 30 in the morning. A car parked at the end of the corner on our block. Mm-hmm. I tell the fiend, like, yo, you know, call him fiend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. high. So mm-hmm. I like, yo, go down there, man. Tell that lady, man, she can't be posting that car. Get real yeah. out here. <laughs> man, he go down there. He come, fa- he, come, he come back. He said, man, that's a cop. She pulled the gun out like she good. Shit. I said, that's what? He's like, that's the police. What the I hell? hauled ass off the block. <laughs> I left. Damn. But by the time I got home, 25, 30 minutes later, my man called me. Like, yo, where you at? Where you at? I'm like, just got this great. Like, yo, I'm about to come get you right now. They raiding, bro. They raiding, bro, in them spot. What the bro, fuck? We ride by the spot on top of Greenwood. They on Chestnut Ray. We mm-hmm. ride down. We see all the black trucks down there. Your the- heart potty. I'm beasting now. I'm, it's beating like crazy. So my brother, he like, yo, what? what? Man, he's like, what we gonna do, bro? I said, listen, we riding around for a while. We get on the highway. He like, yo, I'm about to just jump on the highway. I'm gonna take a ride. I'm gonna get a room. I'm gonna get somebody to give me a room. I said, yo, bro, take me home. I just gotta see my kids before yeah, they get me. Cause you already know what's Let about to happen. Let me go. Yeah, man. So it was, it was crazy. So and that right there, that was that, that was right there. Surreal. The time when I know my time was coming short. And what really hit me like a couple days go by, you know, my day in there. So they realize who the actually the CI is. Mm. They call home. Like, yo, it's it's my man said it's I like, yo, Salam. So this my man was my man uncle yeah. who set us up. My man he right. said it's a nephew up and everything. So God, I'm damn. like, damn, I run to my mom crowd, like Ma, I serve this motherfucker. So you you just knew like, I'm like yo. it's my it's over. So I start telling my mom, like, Ma, I don't know what but so I, from there, I know they looking for me. Yeah. I'm just dipping and dabbing all places. I was on the run for 90 days. Oh, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, nah. like, you ain't let them catch you. They you said I'm catch. out. <laughs> I was on. I really wasn't even out. That's the crazy fucking thing, man. Really? I still was continuously like, but I wasn't in the streets around the streets. But I was going. I was on. Uh, I was on. Uh, I was on. Uh, damn, what that shit was called, man. I was on. Uh, when they oh. let me out, probation. No, oh, I had, uh, house arrest. Nah, I had. Oh. Uh, Drug court. Oh, your drug court. Yeah, <laughs> I was on yeah, drug yeah, court, uh-huh. and I still was even going to drug court once a week, sneaking down there working. But see what got me? I was working. Mm-hmm. So when I'm working, they by the time they come and looking for me, I leave the house five in the morning to get on the truck. I'm delivering furniture at the time for Jaren's. Mm-hmm. So you know we delivering way up Philly. We all. So you over. had a job too. Yeah, I was working. Yo, <laughs> my whole time selling drugs. Yo, you had a job. Yo, I was. I used to work for the. I used to work for taxation. The Department of Tragedy, state job, bro. I had a state job before, man. I thought I had the game sold up. Yeah, you thought I, you had to figure it out. Listen, because I used to watch people, yeah. and then when I start start getting money, I said, yo, I ain't going to do what everybody else do. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be out here eight hours, man. Yep. My time's going to come after that. Me do eight hours at work, yep. and then I'm going to be I'm outside a, all day oh, and night. You had your system. Yeah. yeah so okay. I'm like, oh, I got I'm going to beat this. They ain't going to even know. I, I'm like, Dang. so, man, I had, I had a state job for a minute, and then when I caught my first charge, Mm-hmm. Not even my first, my second charge I caught. That's when I actually resigned from the state job because I know eventually yeah, they don't know, call the yeah. charge, they would have fired me. Mm-hmm. So I resigned November. When I called myself, I resigned November 2005. Mm-hmm. I went to drug court. I turned in November 2005, a couple like a week after I resigned. I mm-hmm. did six months in the, in the drug uh, court program. program. Yeah. Feel what I'm saying? But I do them six months. That's why we always talk about the mind changing. Because in them six months, yo, I had a notebook mm-hmm. and all I wrote on the notebook is how I'm gonna break down bricks of coke when I get. So you out. wasn't even thinking about stopping. You was thinking uh, about how I no. can get better. I said how I'm about <laughs> to turn this one kid to three or four. 
I'm breaking it down, telling myself like, yo, I had it all mapped out, bro. And so, so my my question was, was your upbringing did it cost you to have to sell drugs, or, no, or, or was no, it you was your upbringing no, good enough? No, I had to jump into that. I had a, I had a, a great mother and father, man, magnificent mm. man, hardworking individuals. So it was the environment taught us the environment. I, me being out there every day, you gotta understand. Okay. Once I graduated school, I'm out. Even though when I was in school, sports kept me from getting in trouble because my pops wasn't playing that shit. He's like, yo, my nigga, listen, I'm going to work. You got to find something to do, school aid. Because my parents was like, yo, you got your your reward to us is graduating school, School, doing what you're supposed to do. All right. But when I got out and I made my own decisions and some of the things I started doing, Mm -hmm. 18, so I'm really starting dipping and dabbing in the streets. And I got more time on my hands, idle time, Mm -hmm. idle time. So I tried Mercer County for a semester. It ain't work. Really, school wasn't it? Nah, because, you know, and what's crazy, I never was really into the studying part of school anyway. Mm-hmm. So that's what was what really why it ain't work. And then me pulling with the streets and then me end up getting my first kid's mother pregnant and making that excuse why I'm going to drop out of school. And, so now you got a child that you got to look at. And then I start thinking about that child coming, I'm working. And then I'm like, you know what? And this before I, I even start working yet because I ain't start working at the state building until 2001. Okay. So I'm basically out of school for six months. Mm-hmm. Before I make a decision, I went to uh, that in year 2000 when I graduated. I went to Mercer County only one semester playing basketball. I could have started there and everything, yeah. but I was going to practice. I was supposed to start. I stopped going to practice, stuff like mm-hmm. that. I was good. So then, kid's mother, like, she pregnant, this and that. So I go back like, to coach. I'm like, bro, man, I, ain't, I got to take some time out of school. He's like, yo, don't do it because you ain't going to make it back. He, he ain't going to go back. He yeah. said, I know this story already. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, I'm never be back. I ain't never go back. Nope. <laughs> he nope. knew it. He said it. <laughs> nope. So, that part right there, I started working in state. Then next thing you know, man, slowly start dipping and dabbing in the streets. And what made us, I think it was a lot of us that are hung with young, man. We A lot of us wasn't in the streets, man. We got really? in the streets late after we all mostly graduated school. Really? And what happened was in our area, it was a big sweep happening in our area, man. And like the Dang. feds swept a lot of the older guys who was out there getting some money. So it was and wide everybody open. Everybody walking around, yeah, who got it, who got it, who got it, man. One day eventually we start having it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes, because the and market wide open yeah. now. So it's like now in your head, y'all like, why not? Yeah. And you're like, why not? We out here anyway. Mm-hmm. And that, that's how it started. No plan. Damn. So then so then now, boom, you, you caught up, you incarcerated. Like when you went to court and you knew I'm about to get sentenced, what happened? What, what was it? What was what was that like man. for you? For you and then your family was, as well. It was it was devastating. Cause they say bro. your family do do the time. They with do you. the time with you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cause me going up to that point when I'm, I was uh I was up and down, man. Cause I didn't mm-hmm. want to tell my mom how much time I was facing. Really? Cause at first I was facing. 262 months to 327 Ooh. months. So when they say it in months, I'm like, you, I was about to say, you gotta get a calculator. <laughs> you can't even calculate you like, your fingers. Nah. <laughs> you start getting a calculator and shit. You're like, what is that? Months. So I never, mm. my mom would come back from court one time. I first, my mom like, how you think? I said, man, everything gonna be all right. I'm just telling her everything gonna be good, yeah. man. Just not that, try to have her down more than what she are already, you know, mm. and stuff. And then once I got sentenced, man, I know the lawyer put in a couple various motions to argue because yeah. I never been in prison before. I did a program, but I never did a year yeah. and a day in prison. prison, nowhere. So, and that was our argument because they wanted me to tell so bad that they, of course, they, yeah, they, they started yeah, figuring. Out, yeah, they started figuring. I knew a lot once they found out. Like, yo, we got Tay Rock, so you Tay Rock, you the one. Yeah, so they like, <laughs> oh yeah, you know some shit. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> but you know, I ain't break or nothing. So mm-hmm. they they like, yo, you gonna be facing this, doing this, and then. When I went to court, my lawyer fought, and when he came back, he went yeah. up to the pen, this, uh, he went up there to the podium to talk to the judge and the mm. prosecutor. When he came back, he wrote on a piece of paper 120 months. Ooh. I smiled like I hit the fucking <laughs> jackpot, and that's 10 years. I, was to, I turned around to my mom, and I smiled. <laughs> Like, I'll be I said, yo, this going to be all right. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it hurt my mom because when they was reading off the court case and they yeah. talking about how many months I'm facing and my step pop tell my mom, yo, they trying to give him 30 years, but they not mm. knowing the end after the argument, I was getting mm. a 10. So my mom crying, my they, my sisters and them back there, they emotional. Hey, it's God a, damn, you feel me? So once everything read off and they like, yo, you getting 10 years, bye, bye, bye. You're going to be remanded at Monmouth County doing boom, boom, waiting mm-hmm. to get transferred to a prison. Mm-hmm. So, which I'm like, all right, that's what I turned. Once that was over, they handcuffed me. I turned my mom and said, yo, I'm going to be good. We yeah. good. <laughs> we good. I can do this. We good. I can do this, 10. Yeah. So, man, that, that was that. That's what started my my, 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 my incarceration journey. That was 2007. And how, how old was you? Uh, I was 24. 24. 
I was 24. At 24 years old. 24. You had to go through that. Yeah, I was 24, about to go on 20. I was like in like three months, I've been 25. I got 25. locked up. I got locked up 14 days before Christmas. Uh, <laughs> uh, in 2007, damn, I got locked up 14 yo. days before Christmas, man. So then my daughter, you know, I had a, my daughter. My son was only probably about to be one. Well, he's about to be one. He was one. Probably, yeah. And okay. then my daughter was six. Just had turned six that September. So it was like, damn, I'm leaving. Like, Crucial time. Damn, yeah, those important. But, yeah, 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 the important you, years. You. Damn. And it was like do or die. So when when so now you, you you locked up. It's it's here. Reality set, and it's like yo, I got to do these ten years. Yeah. What's what, what's what's it like for you going into that? Cause you man, say 24, 25, you left this free man, world. Me, like, it, it was like man. Once I started, I'm like man. I just gotta find a way to get through this shit. Yeah. Mentally, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm like bitch, I ain't. I knew the game, like come with uh, yeah. uh, come with some shit. Mm-hmm. So I never thought. In my mind, that I would, I would like just get away scot free oh, with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and then I never thought I would be doing ten years for drugs. I thought you had to kill somebody. Yeah, I saw my man and them kill people and shit them and, and get ten years. I'm like home. eight years somehow. So you I'm think like you seven. Gonna get a couple years. I said, oh shit, yeah, I'll probably get two, three years. Come but on. that wasn't in God's plan for me, man. Yeah. If I got two, three years, I'd have came back out that bitch like doing the same Superman. Thing. Doing the same thing. Doing the <laughs> yeah, same thing. nothing would have changed. I mm-hmm. wouldn't have lost nothing. Mm-hmm. See, the ten years, I lost everything. Yeah. In two to three years, I wouldn't have lost nothing. You wouldn't have sat long enough Even to realize. Even people who left in the 10 years would have stayed mm-hmm. around. They'd have tried to hold on because they're like, he's going to come back strong. Yep. But mm-hmm. that 10 years is a whole nother number. So so when did you when did you start making your plan and say, you know man. what? Fitness is going to be my thing. Somebody else helped me make that decision, really, really. man. It's always somebody else. That, they that, that pointed that, that out to me. So now we're incarcerated now. I'm yeah. working out. I done, I done created a name for myself down here. But just for working out. No, now, I about to say, was that easy creating a name no, for hell, yourself? Though? Yeah, like, no, how, how did prison you do that? Trying, yeah. but when I first got to prison, I, I was on uh, it's the east and the west side. I was down four dicks, so I was on okay. the east side first when I first get there. Yeah. I know I'm from the streets. I only been in prison now. I've been incarcerated eight months, coming yeah. from the county. Get down there, I get in the car with these older guy. One day, I see him in a, in a rec room working out. I was like, "Can I jump in with y'all, man?" They doing pull ups, push. I won't never forget it. Pull ups. <laughs> Push-ups, dips, burpees. All at one. Ten. All at one round. Everything was ten. Yo. Damn. And but they was doing Damn. like twenty sets. I said I could do this shit. Man, but but easy, I got yeah. like I got like eight sets in. I'm I ran to the bathroom to throw up. Them oh. burpees. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, I don't think I go. So the old head coming there and he sparked me. This is what sparked me to work uh-huh. out and say nobody ain't gonna get me. He said, Younger man. He said, man, mm-hmm. you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. So I just can't finish, bro. I'm done. I'm throwing up. He said, nah, bro, you owe us that money. He said, so once you get yourself together, you can come back and finish these sets for us. You thought you was good like, for the what? day. You thought so, you was good. But he said something that meant. He said, yo, that's a part of life. He yeah. said, how the hell you get here? It was easy. Feel what I'm saying? He said, was it easy, right? Mm-hmm. He said, I bet you just got a lot of hit with a lot of time, too. Yep. So he said, how you going to deal with that time? He said, because it's going to be hard. So mm-hmm. that right there stuck with me, mm-hmm. and then I told myself, you know, mm-hmm. ego kicked in. Like I ain't never let nobody drop me off again like that. Yeah, cause now you like man. Yeah, hey, I'm like, that, I'm, like hey. so after that, the next day, I'm in the gym <laughs> shooting basketball, start playing ball again. I'm uh-huh. running ten suicides, mm-hmm. man. I'm just I'm start blacking out, uh-huh. man. Just building up. And then you feel people starting to gravitate, start gravitate but then you. whole thing, then they move me on a whole other side of the prison. So now you got to start. So all now over. I had to restart. I get on the other side. Damn. Yeah, and <laughs> just you got, when you start, getting yeah, you got to say, it's a lot of people. To, the prison held about 2,500 people. Damn. So you figure, you, you take just say when you say a thousand people working out yeah. every day and you're trying to fit in. And the weights is limited, what you get. Mm-hmm. So you got to get known to get weights to every get day. Them, yeah, yeah, you got yeah, to Or not, you're going to be waiting in line for so forever and By might not never get it. Or you got to run out, ask people, can I get them dumbbells when you're done? Can I get this? And mm-hmm. most people giving stuff to somebody else already. Mm-hmm. So man, I just start Damn. making my way. I'm down there, knew a couple people. Once I start knowing a couple people getting yeah. in and they start seeing I work out, work out. I start easing my way in, easing uh-huh, my way in. Uh-huh. And eventually, I ran a whole joint. <laughs> but I say, what year in was you when you finally was like, you know what, everybody coming to me? I probably was, what, three years in? Three years in. Three years in where now it started like gravitating to more of everything my way. And you started, I want to say when it came to the fitness, did you start learning more of nah, that I, or were I you just, just knew, working out? I just knew how to work out, man. About 2011, mm-hmm. I want to say. Somebody asked me a question. My man came down from Raybrook Prison, and he was certified trainer. Now okay. I'm, I got sixteen. I got I got everybody from Trenton down there, mostly working yeah, out with me, yep. and then other people from different mm-hmm. cars from different places, mm-hmm. uh, Virginia. Because they sent a fast, so yeah, it's fast, from all, all over. over. Oh, so okay. New York, Virginia, you name it. I had yeah. people on my workout car. Okay, Indiana, you, yeah. from you name it, bro. Mm-hmm. We in a workout car, so 
He like, yo, bro. Uh, so he asked a, a good question. What you gonna do when you get home? I said, Most shit, I don't, don't know. know. I'm like, man, I got seven years. Eight, I had like eight years left or something. You not even thinking. I'm man. like, I am. I don't have a clue. He said, look, man. Uh, he's like, man. I, uh, I'm certified. I got certified training. He said, you already training people. You might as well be a trainer. He said, when you go home, you ain't got to worry about your background or nothing. So I'm like, True. Mm. So I like, yo, I'm he gave me some information. I'm like, I'm going to get my mom to check into it. Then the prison offered a personal training course for a discount. So I got my mom to pay for that joint. What was the discount? From there on, it's history. We ended up paying, I think, $390. <laughs> that was the discount. So the course discount. was like $800. <laughs> I'm about to the say. The course was like $800. <laughs> so the discount was $390. Jeez. We paid three ninety for the course, man. Personal training course, man. And from there, man, it's like it was history. I was searching to learn, man. And you I was have, able to study in there because yeah, you had the yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, we stayed. So we had the course to study in there. But then I met another guy on my unit, man, that knew nutrition like crazy. Okay, and, yeah, that's what I wanted to get. Yeah, to. yeah, and knew about like blood work and mm-hmm. high blood pressure cholesterol you name a disease knew the things about that it. our people don't, our pay, people attention don't pay attention to he knew about vitamins he knew about alternatives he knew about man everything <laughs> and one day i just kept walking by the table and i see him and one other guy studying the personal training course i got the book i see him but then they studying everything though but they broad they studying outside of just nutrition or and personal training so i'm like man i need to be at this i stopped one day i said y'all need to be at this table with y'all man he's like come down we're here every day at seven o'clock from then on, I was there every day, seven, bro. I wanted to give up so many times. I couldn't pronounce certain words. They was big, you know, mm-hmm. doctor words. So it's like, he like, nah, you're going to be good. Just stay with it. Mm-hmm. He still, We started doing seminar, like have to give up and give a, uh, do a little seminar, but with just us there. And okay. the topic would be high blood pressure. You got to okay. come up and speak without no papers in front of you and explain high blood pressure. What you would give, uh, recommend a person if they already on uh uh, diuretic uh, drugs or something with the doctor. What you would recommend they go talk to their doctor about and stuff like yeah. that. But you said no papers in front of you. No, so you, you had you to, had like to really re- retain it. You had Dang. to remember it. And that was one of the structures one of the in structures. there like, that you had That's to. what we had to do. So each week Dang. we get a new topic. So you had seven days to study that topic. It was like school. Yeah. Damn. It was fine. So hey. it became my college. And the old guy told me that one day because he saw me reading a book. And he's like, yo, yeah, man, you move different. He said, how old are you? He said, you ain't the same age as all these other ones that, man, that be behind you sometimes. Uh-huh. They knucklehead. I'm like, huh? I'm like, bro, I'm 27. Mm-hmm. He like, what? You what? He like, listen, younger. Because you didn't carry yourself. Nah, I ain't mm-hmm. carry myself young. So he like, yo, listen, I'm going to tell you this. He said, look, I'm always asked. He said, yo. Mm-hmm. And he said, what did he, he was like 50 maybe. So he like, I still got 15 years. I'm going to be 65 when I get out of here. He said, Dang. yo. He said, I already been in 15. So he said, yo. He said, listen. He said, yo, you got to make jail your yell. So yeah. it went over my head first. You like, what the I fuck are you talking him, about? Like, yeah. I'm like, what you mean? He like, yo. And he said, nowhere in the world are you going to ever be able to get a free degree again. And I ain't True. have to receive the paper, but he's saying, yo, you never yeah. going to be able to go to college for free again. He said, you get to do all the reading, the studying, the everything right here. Yeah, because you, you, technically you got a bunch of people you got a bunch in of here people. Yeah. that are professionals, professionals in their field. In they're just incarcerated. Yeah. I get you So now. you start meeting you. different people. I get you. People sharp, man, and they learning and stuff, and they passing along, and really? they got books galore. So now you start reading books. You soaking up stuff. Damn, Damn man. I just took that thing. I just wanted it, though. I wanted change. I didn't want to see myself coming back through a prison door. So towards towards the end of your bed, like what was the mental like man, shift? Like, cause I hear a lot of people say they minds start to shift towards the end. Yeah, well, mine was like I'm ready to go, but my mental shift was, was crazy. When I finished my federal bed, mm-hmm. I had to go down to a state prison too. Uh, so it wasn't like you was able to just no, walk right I was out. never. So my mental shift was like, cause yeah. I was young, and, and when I was young, when I went to court for my state sentence, when I was in the feds, they was trying to talk crazy. So I'm just like, man, look, I just got sentenced ten years for the feds. If I said, if y'all saying fucking. 18 months extra God like damn. if i said if 10 years don't change me 18 months ain't gonna do nothing yeah, i said yeah. so whatever y'all do do that shit man i'm mm-hmm. young i feel yeah, young. i'm stressed out mm-hmm. so they did it they ran it consecutive God damn. <laughs> so once my now once my eight years and eight months up with the feds mm-hmm. i'm like oh it's fuck it's time for them. so as the day's coming i know i gotta go to i'm like damn now i gotta go back to mercer county correction center yep I gotta get processed again. I gotta go to craft. Man. I gotta go. Then they're gonna ship me to some prison. I'm mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? It's just it's a bunch of extra shit. It's yeah. Like, go home. So hey. now a new set of they take off the federal cuffs. A new set of cuffs they put right on me. On Walk me out the door. I breathe the fresh air for a second. They put me in a car and they drive me right up to, to Lambertville, Mercer County Correctional Center. God damn. I made it up there in August of 2007. 2007. 
so, August. So then from there, once you finish. And from that, there, I went to craft. I ended up doing. I, I went to craft. I went to craft probably like a month. Mm-hmm. Then I ended up going to Jones Farm. Okay. Uh, there was a camp for another month. Okay. That's two months. Then I ended up going to Bo Robinson mm-hmm. for 60 days, 70 something days, something like that. Yeah. And then I ended up doing fucking 14 months in a halfway house. Uh. <laughs> I was yeah. What's the, is the, is the halfway house like? Would you rather just finish this shit out, or do you have to do? Like I would have. You can finish it out. You but I thought I was gonna be able to get to the halfway house and start my life journey. Mm-hmm. But the halfway house became worse than the, me being in it prison. Was like, I, was like, I could have just stayed in prison. <laughs> but then when I wanted to go back, my mom like I'm like mom. About to say, I hate up here, mom. I'm, like, I'm in Newark. It's Kentuck Three. Oh yeah, so you're not even there. Place. Yeah. It's like a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, and you got right. twenty something people in a room with you. Man, you feel what I'm saying? Fuck, I'm like, man. what the fuck this, is this? This is some bullshit. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, that shit was aggravating me. And they younger, they wild. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, man, and but it's like you just trying to go home. Yeah, man. I was, stre- I was just stressed out, man. So I got through that, man. I ended up getting a job at uh, Four Seasons, man, which basically was a health and fitness spot. Okay, man, and that right there. And what, what age was you when you finally came home? When I came, home, I was 30s going on. I was. About to be 36. 36, okay. I was 35 going on 36. So now you like, I got to get a job. Yeah, I got to get a job. I'm like, I got to get a job, man. And what, so, it was the job. Was trainer or was nah, it the when I first Now, I had a job in the halfway house. Okay. That was up north. When I came home, I didn't have a job, so I was trying to find a job when yeah. I came home. So I ended up working at uh, the first job I had. What was I doing? First, first job. Oh, the first job I actually got was uh, uh, work for called Tree Brothers. Uh, I was cut. They was cut cutting trees. down trees and shit. <laughs> One of somebody I knew connected me with them because uh, par- parole was on me. They were sending me to what's the name? And I'm like, child. man, I, I had federal parole and I had fe- federal probation and regular parole. Regular parole two. sucked. Yeah. The federal probation was cool because they didn't hound you like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking care of that, man. I got a job at Tree Brothers. Worked there for like a month. It was cold out, so they really ain't had yeah, work. It would work. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying not to go back to this program. Mm-hmm. I lied to them. Like, yeah, I got a job. I'm going to you. <laughs> then I end up getting a job at Train. Okay, yep, yep. Then I'm working mm-hmm. at Train. Then I'm like, man, I ain't like Train. Uh-huh. End up leaving Train. Went to like Premier Packaging. Another little warehouse job. Yeah. Ain't like that shit neither. <laughs> then <laughs> end up leaving it. Then I end up work, getting a job at two gyms. Uh, New York Sports Club. And Jersey, New York Sports Club in Princeton and Jersey Strong. Okay. Yeah. I'm working for $8.30 at these gyms, bro. What year was this? What year? 2008. 2008, yeah. So remember, we used that in the minimum wage. Yeah, because but, but at a gym, prices is different than how oh, they will pay you somewhere else in, at a regular job. You I get, get what I'm saying? I get you, yeah. So, yeah, man, I stopped. I'm like, fuck that. that but, that. but that was better than prison to me. Yeah. I was in prison <laughs> getting paid $40 a month. Yeah, cause you ain't, you, yeah, you, you, you ain't, ain't get the same out here. Nah, yeah, four dollars yeah. a month. So God, that was just like that started my. That's what I wanted to do. I was certified for this, and that because that, you that left my, prison certified. Yeah, right? okay. I'm certified. I'm actually certified, certified through an institution. Now that ain't had nothing to do with prison. Yeah. Right there, I paid the outside Source. schooling uh, to be certified because you, you could go to school, no. but I just did it when I was in prison. I get you. I get you know you. what I'm saying? So I took the opportunity, man. I just once I got out here, I just been running with it ever since, man. Through all the ups and downs, all the hardships, I'm still on that journey of trying to blossom. And when, so when when we left all those jobs, when did you say, "Yo, I'm starting Team Chisel"? Team Chisel was started when I walked out of prison. Oh, okay, you were just I, building it. Yeah, yo, uh-huh. the name Team Chisel came from prison. From prison, really? Because they used to call us Chisel in there. Every we ripped <laughs> you, up, you we on some shit in there. Up. <laughs> we getting right, we getting right. So they know, you know, they we getting right, and they's like they chisel and them feel me so one day me and my man's and we sit in the library we trying to come up with a name for chisel i got all my paperwork wrote down from the beginning to the end like low uh logos and shit from mm. beginner logos look crazy mm. mad names we trying to figure out and then they're like yo team bro because we all be together we rock yeah. together we all be mm-hmm. you feel what i'm saying and it's just that stuck with me okay team chisel team. man so and then then the, the meaning became greater like together everyone achieved more you know okay, yeah, so you broke, so you even broke you that broke down. You broke it down and then mm-hmm. chisel. You know what I mean? Constantly helping individuals zealously elevate life. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a strong, down. yeah, so it's a strong meaning to the word. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a blessing, man. 
and and as far as far as that like where where do you see that going like where do you want to push that this is going push this this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be like worldwide man we, we mm-hmm. I, no worldwide is always the ultimate goal i'm never going to think small man of course of course so right now you know i connect with a brother man my brother no be you man no william mm-hmm. shaw man you know he got intensity but last fitness yes, so we looking to like really to like build we were looking to have one like everywhere really? <laughs> tell okay. you the truth yeah, man we're like yeah. you know now we working on one right now just like you know we went through up a hurdle so we trying to get this one right the yeah, blossom what, what, what was what was that hurdle like man that was that was, that was <laughs> hell punch in the face bro and it was crazy right i've been getting knocked down for four and a half years man but just getting back up mm-hmm. getting back up man this last one man i was a knockdown that like i had took a lot of my savings and invested to do this to this do, last yeah. one i stopped working I took some money, man. I invested what I had, man. Like, I'm going to make it work. You feel me? And when this happened and we closed on the other building and they knocked us down that we had to get out, man, that shit was devastating to me. Was it like, it like, it like, it like, it broke my heart, but it was like, I can't give up now. Yeah, like, no matter man. if I don't got the money, no matter the finances, I can't stop. Because it's always something greater, man. And it's like, to me, I learned that God take you through some shit to get you somewhere. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was, it was a lesson. What, what what was the best thing that happened to you this year? The bet getting this new building, man. <laughs> getting this new building this year. Uh huh. Getting this new building, man. Actually, now the I know everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. I signed the lease myself. It's, it's, your, 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 it's your my spot. spot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is ours, man. We, nobody else. Yeah, man. it's not ten other people that's <laughs> own the fucking building. Uh huh. It's not the headaches, ups and downs, but. Mm. That was the, that's the greatest thing now we're just in a process of like getting it together and like building it man and and bl- and blowing this out of control so in a five year span from now from today man we looking mm. to have at least like three four more buildings that's dope, at least man. three well, three um, four no i always like to make a big goal yeah. so if i don't get three lungs we got one <laughs> if um, i don't get four lungs we got two <laughs> <laughs> as long as you keep moving as long as i keep elevate. moving yeah that's elevation you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. you feel me so we looking like and then you know me my greatest thing like i love trenton right but mm-hmm. so me downtown just don't have nothing people missing health one so me in like a year and a half two years i plan on having a building in trenton yeah. for health and wellness exactly. we plan on having a, a building that's going to offer health and wellness going to offer a lot of other programs too for individuals that we're working on now mm-hmm. and we're going to create that like through our nonprofit that we're working on okay and, and so my other thing, I meant to ask earlier, mm-hmm. but when somebody come to sign up with you and work out, like, what is your routine for them? They just get into the gym. They mm-hmm. new. I'm trying yeah. to get right. What it's yeah. like because people me. think when they come work out, I'm gonna be sore and I ain't coming yeah. back. You know, I tell a person you're gonna be sore anyway because you ain't been doing nothing. True. I can tell you to do True. jumping jacks and right now squats and don't put no weights in your hand. <laughs> Tomorrow you're gonna be sore because uh-huh. you ain't been doing none of that shit. When a person first come to me, I find out actually what their goals are. Okay. I try to figure out is they really ready to commit. By what they tell me, certain mm-hmm. things they tell me. But me, I got, I, I like, get, I got to talk to a person and get into their mental before I can change their body. So it's all mental things, man. Mm-hmm. Me telling them like, yo, you're gonna be sore, you're gonna be this, but don't let that stop you. So you talk to you know, them, yeah. Them know. You gotta okay, talk yeah. to them. I talk them along. Yeah, just taking their break money everything. And saying, nah, yeah, okay. see, it's not an issue about the money for me. That's why mm-hmm. if a person go really look at our prices and match them with other people, we don't charge that much really. Mm-hmm. But because we're looking at building communities, exactly. Not just building one person because they could pay me $500 for the month and exactly. only come 10 times. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're not looking for that because if so, if I was looking for that, I could move somewhere and get that shit. Easy. Because of what I know and shit, but I feel anywhere you go and, and no matter what, you, you could cater to everybody. No matter how much money they making, no matter how little money they making. So we creating a market of wave of community, of upbringing and uplifting. You know? So now we in Hamilton now. So we got Trenton, Ewing. Boring town, Yardville, Heist Town, East Windsor. We talking about all these places that a person could travel to. Browns Mills. Exactly. Once people find out mm-hmm. what we're doing, they're gonna want to travel to us. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be nobody gonna complain about driving thirty minutes to come to us. Nah, uh-uh. <laughs> once they see the results. Once they see the results and, and they see what we're doing. Once they mm-hmm. the message that we're giving, the energy that we're giving. Mm-hmm. See, we not just changing bodies; we changing mind, body, soul. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? Got to get the mind. Yeah. Got to get the mind. What, what, what's something you tell your younger self? Like age of probably like 19, Me, 19 20. right now, I would tell us, my younger self, man, leave them fucking streets alone. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? If I knew uh, what I knew then. Yeah. But it was hard because I had $100,000. Uh, you feel what I'm saying? So like, but right now with what I know, that money don't mean shit. Mm-hmm. So I would have told myself, man, get the, man, what the fuck are you doing, boy? 
use you that better stop money. you better take that money buy two cribs real stop quick right now yeah stop <laughs> take that right money now. get two cribs they cheap out here you're uh-huh. gonna get two cribs you can find two cribs you probably pay about 30 40 mm-hmm. take that 60 get a bank account you know what i mean learn something about business mm-hmm. start getting business credit now you for take out a little bit of money start fixing them up and you still got some money in the bank Good. You feel what I'm saying? Good then good now you gonna start an investment. You know, that's me would have been telling my younger self, but I didn't know that then. Uh, uh, had no clue uh, of what was going on. Had to bump your head. Yeah, you know you had to fall. You know how you tell you. A soft ass big heart. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, you feel me? So yeah. um yeah. all right, so shout out everything you got going on. Uh got going on. Let them know when a new spot they can come to the new spot. Yes, Let yeah. them how to find you, man, everything. Man, yo, yo, so the new spot, we rocking there right now with our old clients that we have. Okay. That's coming in now. We started opening the doors a little bit for them, but okay. we will be actually we actually trying to kick off and have all the doors swung open by the middle of September. But we're gonna do a grand opening round thing October eighth. Okay. Where we really a bust the door open, man. Mm-hmm. But you can find me on Instagram, man, at team underscore chisel underscore LLC. You can find me on YouTube, Team Chisel. Mm-hmm. You can find me on uh TikTok, Team yeah. Chisel at Team Chisel. Mm-hmm. You can find me on Facebook, Dante Thomas. Man, you can also go to my website, www.gochisel.com. Now when you put chisel in C-H-I-Z-E-L. It's okay. always with that Z. Mm-hmm. That Z what changed the game, man. It changed lives, man. So, you know, we just you know we here, man. We about to make some noise. We about to be heard around the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we tell you, we about hey, to make some noise, and, man. And, and also find more how fitness Finna Change Our Lives podcast too. Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about that <laughs> they, one. They Damn, got that bro. one too. Oh, yeah. see, it's a lot going on. Follow us on How Fitness Change Our Lives podcast. Please subscribe to our channel, man. Uh-huh. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh-huh. Y'all go back check us out. We got some good information yeah, on there too, definitely. man. Because sometimes I'll be blacking out when he they do, give me he certain do, topics. He do, he do. <laughs> so. I, I didn't want to spaz out too much on this because I want y'all to go over there and listen to this. So once y'all done with this, yeah. go over there to that podcast and they yeah. got like twenty, almost twenty plus, twenty four episodes. episodes. We're all twenty three right now. Mm-hmm. When they you hear know. this, it'll probably be like twenty four. Yeah, it'll be about twenty four, like five, twelve. Yeah, so we've yeah. got like twenty five. And once this one drop, so yeah. we've got like twenty five. But man, you know. And um, oh, also, man, shout out Craig too. You oh next. yeah, Craig. You next, Craig. <laughs> Craig got to get on. That's my brother, man. I know my other brother, B. You was just on. <laughs> Here he yeah. did his thing, waiting to see his episode. Uh-huh. But man, this is wonderful. Man, I thank Dex though, man, because we building the brotherhood, man. Like mm-hmm. in a short amount of time, it's been wonderful. They've been helping us too, man. So I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, it's been like for having six, me on six, your six, six, seven months. Yeah, we've been, so we've been rocking, and rolling. We've been rocking bro. And it's been yeah. great, man. It's like, the growth. Like, yes, like I said, it's the motivation, <laughs> it's the push. It's like it's like. And something that I admire about all three of y'all is like something that y'all said, and even Tracy Sofek said this like you got three people doing the same thing and nobody buttoning it. Yeah. Like, and that's not easy to do. Nah. And what we kind of talk about, it should be easy to do. Yeah. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Like, so it seeing y'all do that, I admire that because I'm like, now I'm surrounding myself with a bunch of individuals that's in friendly competition. Yeah. we pushing each other. We're trying to motivate each, each other. other. Get Cause I look at if I'm with you, bro, and I'm doing something with you around me, bro. Hey. I, if I got all the money, you what good as you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got to get some money too. So now exactly. we both going to shine together. Exactly. And when we shine together, we're going to become more powerful because mm-hmm. we're going to create greater resources for, mm-hmm. to do more things. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, because now we can say, yo, bro, you got this right here. Yo, yep. all right, let's put this up and let's go try to do this real quick. Mm-hmm. We all sit down, we play, write, write a road map out, man. Mm-hmm. Because if the more people you got on board, the easier it is for individuals to start things because it's not always got to be one burden on one individual. Mm-hmm. Starting a business and doing stuff like that is hard as hell. Yes, very. It's very, it's very hard, man. So, Oh, my, la- my last question is, who, what advice would you give somebody that's up and coming in fitness? Oh, man, up and coming in fitness, man. Learn as much as you can learn. Don't just want to be a regular trainer. Mm-hmm. Educate yourself, man. Educate yourself. Be sharp. Know about the body. Know about diseases. Know about high mm-hmm. blood pressure, cholesterol. Know about vitamins, man. Minerals. Know yeah. about things people need, man. So learn, man. Learn, 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 mm-hmm. learn. <laughs> Never stop learning. Don't ever stop learning and be the best and tell yourself, man, you are the best. You great. You the greatest. Mm-hmm. I don't care if nobody right there on the side of you look think you better than him. Like me. I feel I'm the greatest and I got great brothers around me, but like I tell myself I'm the greatest. Mm-hmm. Nobody got gonna to. outshine me in fitness. That's got how to. I look. Got to. You feel me? Got to. So got man, to. young ones coming up, man. Just whatever you do, anything you do in life, work hard at it, man, and don't stop. When that trial and tribulation hit you and that storm come, don't stop. Fight a little harder. Yeah. 
And that, that's, 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 when, that's when you get the best version of you. Yeah. Because once you fought, you went through it, and they said, man, I came out stronger, better than ever. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, man, I appreciate you for doing yeah, this episode. You. Definitely. Man, definitely. This, this, this is a good one. We got a lot more coming for y'all in the future, so yes, definitely yes. be on the lookout. Um, and like that, man, i see y'all next see week. See y'all the next one. Uh-huh.